Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, coming to you from the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about Jack Eichel, the Buffalo Sabres situation, and some teams that are still involved with wanting to trade, possibly, for Jack Eichel. Uh, also, the Edmonton Oilers have some things going on with their goaltending. Um, as well as Tarasenko as a possibility for a few teams out there. So we're going to look at that. Um, again, I mentioned this is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Do, do you like all teams from every all the four major sports, or do you like any of the teams from the four major sports? We are go, we do all of that at Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Exactly what we're doing here. We're getting more and more creators doing more and more teams and giving you more and more fun content, live streams, videos, writers, everything. It is freaking awesome. Go check it out. Also, if you are interested in being a creator, uh, let us know in the comment section. We might be able to use your work. We'll see. Uh, you do get some money for it. You will be getting paid for it. Uh, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, which will be on today. This is of the... Uh, Wednesday. I don't pay attention to dates. I think I know by now. What do you say? Fourth. <laughs> Wednesday, August 4th. Uh, at 1 o'clock Mountain Time, 3 o'clock Eastern till 5. And uh, come check it out. We talk about everything hockey there all the time. If you're a diehard NHL hockey fan, you are going to love it. It's totally interactive. There's tons of people there to chat with and uh i do a show much like i'm doing right now okay let's look at some of these crazy things that are going on in the nhl oh also at the end have a little talk about where we're going how things are going to be and we're going to do a little perlo dance together because i like to do that sort of thing so stick to the end of the video for that All right, teams potentially in on Jack Eichel. There, uh, before I go into that, I'm going to go a little bit into the Jack Eichel situation so we can get an idea of what these teams that are going in on Jack Eichel are getting themselves into. Um, we have, this is from the Hockey News, which is a fine publication. Go check it out. It's uh, John John Waro. I really love this, like his stuff. I like the way he presents it. Um, but they J Jack Eichels. I won't read it all, but released a statement basically saying that um, th their their medical staff had recommended a artificial disc replacement surgery. Now they were told by the Buffalo Sabers that hey, why don't we wait? A while and see if it corrects itself before we decide doing anything specifically about surgery and as far as they were concerned Buffalo's medical staff were perfectly okay with disc replacement surgery uh, however as as it's come out now as it's gone further now the Buffalo Sabres have never said that they were okay with it at any time. They never said that they weren't either. Uh, but as it came out, this, in their defense, they could have thought it was okay and then afterwards decided otherwise. Um, Adam said there was no change from the Sabres medical staff in recommending uh, against Eichel having procedure, which would never, which was, has never been performed on an NHL player. He then added, added the Sabres are in control of Eichel's future because he remains under contract and he doesn't feel any com pressure to complete a trade. Now, so basically they're at a standstill. Um, Eichel wants the surgery. The Sabres want him to have a fusion type surgery. And apparently, and I didn't realize this at first because my first question was, why doesn't Eichel just go get the surgery? He's got lots of money. He can pay for it himself. And then after the surgery is done, 
Buffalo can he can have a clean bill of health and get traded, right? That would seem logical to me. Uh, and I thought at that time that it might be really Eichel's kind of doing to himself here that he wouldn't go get the surgery himself. Is it a financial thing? Like I can't, couldn't see it, but if it was, it seems kind of silly. Uh, he, uh, but it turns out, and it doesn't say that here, but I've heard it in a few places on Sirius Radio that apparently with the CBA, that a player, a team has really, as uh, Adams has said here, controls the situation. And if they don't want him to have this fusion surgery or this uh, replacement surgery and they want him to have a fusion, they can veto it. It's He is under contract with them. But uh, what I don't understand here is now I'm more on Eichel's side of things. Why, do the, why don't the Sabres just let him get whatever surgery he wants? Just tell him he has to pay for it if you absolutely have to. Um, and when he's back, whatever team that's going to trade for him is going to have to be okay with the surgery as well. Right? So just let him go do the surgery. My thinking here is that the Buffalo Sabres are trying to pigeonhole him to stay with the organization. That you're going to get the surgery we want. And then we'll talk about trading or not trading you. We have your rights and we're not going to get pushed around. I think that's what Buffalo Sabres are doing here. And I think that's an incorrect thing to do. Uh, if that is the case, if that indeed is the case. They already have going to have a difficult time bringing free agents into Buffalo in the situa this situation that they're in. Creating more of a mess like this seems kind of silly to me when you're not going to have the player anyways. Um, it doesn't seem like a situation that a player is going to put you into again in the future, really. Um, it seems very odd. But anyways, they're holding on to it and uh, they're sticking with their plan. If you have, if you have any other insight into this, uh, it seems very confusing to me what Buffalo is doing here, but that wouldn't be the first time. Uh, part of the reason why Eichel, I believe, is leaving is everything has been confusing with what Buffalo has done in the past, right from the time he was drafted. Um, so he, the general manager at the time, uh, I always forget his name, was uh, not Wilson, Simpson, I believe it was. Uh, when he drafted Eichel, I, he, he literally, not drafted him, but when he lost the lottery, when the Buffalo Sabres lost the lottery, he literally rolled his eyes almost in disgust that he didn't get McDavid. And from that, I was like, are you kidding me? Like from that moment, it just, I said, this organization is a mess. If I was an owner and I saw a general manager do that, to a prospect that you're you're doing it to the prospect you're basically telling the prospect that we're not happy that we're getting you and then all the things that happened after that i don't blame michael for wanting out and this i'm putting it right now until proven otherwise i'm leaning that buffalo is botching this rather than uh michael is being a spoiled brat uh hockey player you know, superstar hockey player that just wants it his way. I'm leaning that way. Uh, what are you guys leaning on that? But let's look at some of the teams that are still involved in this uh, possible trade talks. Now, they would have to be teams that are okay to roll in the dice that he's going to be okay with the surgery. And the number one team I keep on hearing over and over again, and uh, Mr. Parsons wrote this, uh, Jim Parsons, great writer, uh, wrote this piece saying that apparently the rumor was, and it is a rumor, we don't know it for a fact, that the rumor we asked was Riley Smith, this was the ask, Buffalo was asking for Riley Smith, prospect center Peyton Krebs, which is their best prospect and looks to be a good one, really good, defenseman Nicholas Hag, and a first round pick. Nicholas Hag, is uh, has been progressing in the minors now for quite some time. He's 22 years old. He looks like he could be, 
you know, a four or lower defenseman. He looks pretty good in a first round pick. Now, if I'm Vegas in this situation, Riley Smith, by the way, did I mention Riley Smith? Riley Smith has got one year left on his contract. He'd have to resign with Buffalo. So that could end up just turning into a pick as well. But if I'm Vegas and this is, you're going for basically generational player Eichel that he was drafted as, believing that Buffalo has pretty much botched really everything and it's been a struggle in his career so far. And he actually is, has the talent that made him, gave him the moniker of generational player when he was drafted. This is a fair deal, but you got to believe that. I believe it. I believe if he left Buffalo and played with guys like Stone and Pacioretty, he would do unbelievable. Over a 100-point player. I believe it. I would probably do this deal. I, supp- I I would probably do this deal. They're going for it, going for it, going for it, Vegas, right? Um, it's Is it going to hurt their depth? Yeah, but that never stopped them before. If that's really the way direction you're going and you're just going to keep on grabbing players like they have been, like Peter Angelo last year, and you're going to hope you don't have significant injuries and go for a cup, this deal is a fair deal. You would have to believe that he's going to be okay. So if they're coming back to them and saying, well, we want to know about the surgery and all that kind of stuff like that, they're going to, uh, they, uh, Buffalo's going to say, well, we're making this trade based on the idea that you have to be comfortable with the surgery. We're not giving you a discount. And I would say in this, with this trade, they're actually getting a bit of a discount. They're giving you something because I think if Eichel being totally healthy and totally ready to go for sure, this package wouldn't do it. So I don't know. Vegas is turning it down. I think maybe part of it has to do with the fact that Alex Tuck is going to be injured now for five, six months. So Riley Smith became more important to them, whatever. I'm sure they're mulling it over, but for a generational center, I'm doing that deal. Anyways, that was interesting. Uh, Gretz, Gretz also lists New York Rangers and Los Angeles as favorites, acknowledging that each team does have their own internal contracts to worry about. Yes. Uh, the Los Angeles Kings were in this to right off the get-go from what I understand, and the Rangers have always been hanging around, but they're not happy with what the asking is at the moment. So, uh, there we go with that. Um, next. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Anaheim as well. Anaheim's been in there for a long time. And a possible, possibly what they were offering was Trevor Zegras and a first. But what I hear is that was what the asking was. And they balked at that. They don't want to give up that. And I don't blame them. Trevor, I don't blame Anaheim for not wanting to give up, give up Trevor Zegras. But, and I don't blame Buffalo for wanting Trevor Zegras. If I'm going to trade Eichel, I, Zegras is the guy I want in that package for sure. Are you going to do it straight across? I don't know. I mean, is Zegras ever going to be as good as Eichel? Probably not, but he's got an amazing attitude. He would definitely change this, the, the culture of Buffalo there. So maybe you're not going to get a first on top of it. Maybe you're going to have to get something a little less than that. But... I'd want Trevor Zegers for sure. I can see Anaheim wanting this because they are a team that's in a rebuild, let's face it. And it's a long burn. They're in a market that needs something to attach to their organization to draw people in until that happens because they're losing a lot of money. Anaheim, Anaheim is not a hockey market. You got to get them excited for them to go to games right now as they grow. And they're still growing as a hockey market. It's better than it. It's getting better every year. But not having a guy, like, having somebody like Eichel there while they rebuild would help an awful lot. So I get them being interested for sure. Next, Oilers interested in Hudobin. And uh, this is David Staples, great writer here. I actually did a video with him myself uh, um, for the Edmonton Oilers. He, he says that uh, they might be interested in Hudobin, I would have to think they're very interested in Hudobin. They have, uh, I don't believe that they should be uh, happy with Koskinen as their backup. 
And uh, they were apparently in on Darcy Kemper before Colorado snagged him. Uh, I don't like. Uh, I don't think they or anyone else that I've heard like the idea of having Smith and Koskinen going into next year. Dallas, as it says here, signed surprisingly signed to Braden Holtby. Now, uh, Hudobin or uh, yeah, Hudobin last year did have a run in with the coach Rick Bonus. Whatever he did, he was sat for like three games. And uh, didn't play at all. And then was brought back and used rather sparingly in compared to what it was, what he was before. So there was, it never, I don't think Bonus ever was very happy with whatever Hudobin did. And uh, getting Holpe, to me, pretty much said Hudobin's on the way out. Great for the Edmonton Oilers, as long as they're okay with whatever Hudobin did. Um, he would be an excellent piece at 35 years old. They'd have the oldest goaltender tandem in the league, for sure, but I would definitely like that better than Koskinen. Hudobin has put up numbers similar to, as uh, the writer here, great writer here says, Parson says that, uh, uh, similar to Grubauer, Hullabuck, and Darcy Kemper. Um, that, and his, his for, the, for the last, was that four years? Last two seasons has been a 0.918, which is more than Smith. <laughs> and is right around Connor Hellebuck, Philip Grubauer, and Darcy Kemper. So, yes, I think that they would be interested. However, they got to do something with Koskinen's $4 million contract before they could ever do that. There's been talk of a buyout. I think, though, although Koskinen had a rough year last year, he did play a lot of games while Smith was injured, and it appeared like something happened during that time when he span when he played a lot of those games in a row, and he wasn't the same after that. The year before that, he put up a .917 save percentage. If they were to retain some of that contract, I think there's a place for him out there. However, now you're if you do retain some of that contract, it's like getting Hudobin, who is at three 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 million something like that. He signed a contract where it went three straight across. Uh, and whatever you retain on top of that to have a goaltender like Hudobin. But I think it's worth it. Uh, better than having Koskinen there. So I certainly hope Edmonton is in on that. Who else might be in on that? I'm not sure there really is too much. And that's the other thing here. The Oilers might have some leverage here because I don't think there is really at this moment a lot of other goaltenders out there uh, being looked at um, besides the Buffalo Sabres and the Arizona Coyotes. So I'm pretty sure Koskinen would prefer to go to Edmonton. Um, I I do believe he has a, like a, a limited no trade clause. Um, I should look that up here. Yeah, never mind. Go look it up yourself. <laughs> I never even thought to look that up. No, I'll look it up for you. No trade clause. Dallas Stars. It's quick. Hudobin. He does have a, mo a, a no trade clause. So a moderate no trade clause. So even if it's a four team, all he has to do is say, I don't want to go to Buffalo and Arizona. And that really pushes everybody out because they're all the other goaltending in the league is pretty much. Uh, been taken care of. Uh, besides maybe Toronto. Toronto could be another one that's in there. But interesting take nonetheless. If you know of any other ones that you might be in there, let me know in the comment section. Sharks, Timo Meyer rumor denied. Uh, this was a rumor that were, was flatly denied by Friedman. I heard about it and I didn't think it was going to go anywhere and it didn't go anywhere because that would be silly. There's no reason for them to trade. Uh, Meyer, they are a sort of rebuilding team. He's a young guy. He's got a lot of talent. I, I couldn't see him trading them. Three teams working on a Tarasenko trade. Uh, notes, David Pagnota, the fourth period. Fourth period's a great site. I'd recommend you check it out. Um, apparently, the Je New Jersey Devils, New York Rangers, and the New York Islanders are in a battle for the St. Louis Blues forward, Vladimir Tarasenko. 
While other reports suggest there hasn't been a lot happening on the Tarasenko front, Tignota notes that there has been progress on a potential trade. Now, of these three, I think the most serious one here would be the Islanders. I This is my personal opinion. I think uh, opinion based on what I the facts that I do know, just based on their roster. Um, the New York Rangers, it really doesn't make much sense when they're trying to make room for guys like Kako and uh, Lafreniere to play, to bring in a guy like Tarasenko to take those minutes. Um, New Jersey Devils does make a little more sense. They do need a shooter. I just think that, I just find it a little concerning that Tar- for Tarasenko's age. Although I think they probably have interest, the team with the most interest, I believe, would be the New York Islanders. Um, two years getting knocked out by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, hearing that they're probably going to sign Palmieri and or and uh, Zajac. These, the, this team is going for it more than New Jersey is, and I, I do believe we'll have more vested interest to be able to pick up somebody like Tarasenko. Um, of course, taking the risk of the injury, shoulder injuries that he's had and all of that, it's, it, is a, it is certainly risky. I think New Jersey and the Rangers are more in this to make sure the Islanders pay top for him to hurt their franchise, which teams do a lot, than to actually grab the player. Now, that being said, New Jersey at the right price, I think could have interest in Tarasenko. Um, they have a lot of passers on that team. Uh, Sharon Govich, Kukinen, Hughes, Heischer, a lot of passers. Uh, although Sharon Govich actually is a bit of a shooter. But they could really use a marksman to be able to get set up and shoot. And I think that they're going to be a little better next year than people think. Uh, they made some really good moves. So it's possible that they could, although be on the edge, they might just take them anyways. So I think New Jersey and the Islanders would be the two ones uh, actually most in this. The Rangers are sort of there just to bring make sure the price is right so the teams have to take a hit. But the most driven, I believe, if they are believing that Tarasenko's injury is okay, would be the New York Islanders. And I think that they would be hard to beat if it got into a race as assets and uh, picks were concerned. To be able to pick somebody like up that like him up, I also think probably Bailey would be part of the deal, and that's another thing with the new Jer- with New Jersey. I don't see too many players that they'd want to have involved in this trade. Where I do believe St. Louis would be interested in bringing a player back, they're looking for more depth. Uh, there, this this would be a team now with uh, after getting. Uh, Buknevich, sorry, from from the St. Louis Blues and uh, Saad from Colorado. Why are names escaping me today? I don't know. Saad from Colorado, that they would be looking to build some depth to still be a contender this year. So they would be interested in somebody like Bailey, I believe. And I don't think New Jersey really has all that much to be able to give up in that regard. So... That's my 442 for today, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Why don't you, now, for all of you that don't like the frolic, you can leave now. But if you appreciate the frolic, I would highly, what we're going to do here is we're hitting the subscribe and the bell. And what's going to happen is we are pushing this to thousands and thousands and thousands of followers. And eventually, I'm going to be coming to your land we're going to be going to games together in what's called a jet o frolic. That's right. We're going to have a jet o frolic, and we're going to have all the bacon in the land that you can eat and chocolate. That's all there. That's going to be there. Now, I don't drink, but we'll make sure there's plenty of beer for you as well. And most of all, most of all, we're going to perlo dance like nobody's business. at the games it's gonna be great so hit that subscribe and the bell let's get this party going yo okay bye